Nvidia's Blackwell architecture is taking shape, and from the early information that I've been receiving, it's very impressive indeed. Nvidia's strategy, of course, will be to double down on ray tracing as well as path tracing performance, but their goals also are to retain the raster performance crown, which traditionally AMD have competed fairly well in. For AMD's efforts, of course, RDNA 4 is their longer term strategy. And with RDNA 3, we saw a very advanced chiplet design, but this will continue to evolve with RDNA 4 with the GCX and GCD configuration that I've discussed several times on the channel. In this video then, I want to discuss Blackwell and how NVIDIA are most likely going with a monolithic design, discussing the performance goals that I've been hearing along with some of the features and some of the early specifications that I've been told regarding RTX 50, assuming of course that NVIDIA doesn't change the name yet again. And we're going to get into all of this after this message from the video's sponsor. This video is sponsored by NordVPN, so a big thanks to them for being part of keeping this channel running. With the amount of malware, phishing, and password attacks out there, having a VPN is pretty much mandatory in 2023. NordVPN has over 5,500 servers worldwide, allowing you to browse the internet anonymously and safely with just a single click without compromising on speed, allowing you to browse or even play games without losing out. Some of Nord's features include hiding your IP, securing encryption, threat protection, we'll get to that in a moment, and more. And don't forget, NordVPN has no data logging, meaning that nobody can get your hands on your data or IP address. While safety and anonymous browsing is a big part to use NordVPN, it goes way beyond just the escaping those pesky trackers. They have just launched a brand new feature, Threat Protection. This is a great feature as it allows you to protect your PC from ads, trackers, a malicious website, and scan suspicious files for malware, even when you are not connected to a VPN. And the best part? This feature comes at no additional cost. There are a whole suit of benefits and perks to using NordVPN, one of which of course is browsing content from other countries. If your favourite movie or TV show is geo-locked outside of your home country, then NordVPN has you covered. Simply change your country with a single click or tap if you're on mobile, and then all previously hidden content will be yours to enjoy. Indeed, this actually came in super handy for myself over Christmas. While I had to entertain some German guests due to family, their English just wasn't great. So using NordVPN, yep, I do use it in my personal life, I managed to access the German content for them and I could watch that content myself thanks to English subtitles. Get our exclusive NordVPN deal at NordVPN slash RGT. That's NordVPN slash RGT. You can also, of course, find a link in the description. It's completely risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. So then, let's get this out of the way. Nvidia appears to be going monolithic for its highest-end RTX gaming variant cards, but the server versions, HPC, will be based on chiplet for the highest performance tiers. When I asked my source why Nvidia were going monolithic for GeForce, they told me that Nvidia believes that it can compete favorably with RDNA 4 with monolithic designs in both desktop and laptop. An earlier source had told me that NVIDIA were testing both monolithic and chiplet and had not then reached a decision, other than, again, the HPC variants. So, in summary, GB102 and lower-end SKUs such as GB104, these will be monolithic, and I think they are leveraging TSMC's free NM process, albeit custom. Server versions, though, such as GB100, those are based on the chiplet approach. And... Well, there have been gaming MCM variants considered, as I've just mentioned. It is possible that those could launch eventually, but so far I suspect that yes, it will be a monolithic design that comes to market. Multiple sources now have told me that NVIDIA are leveraging a number of architectural changes over RTX 40, including a new SM structure, and I'm told that there is hyperspeed bus interlinks between the various SMs. These may spread across chiplets too, in the case of, let's say, GB100 variants. There's also a new denoising accelerator. Now, previously I'd said that I think that this was a separate block on the die, but I don't think this is actually the case necessarily. In fact, a new source has told me that it's possibly new tensor core functionality, or perhaps an instruction or something or, or another. Honestly, it's too early to guess, but again, path tracing and ray tracing are something that NVIDIA are going to be absolutely focused on for RTX 50. We've already seen, of course, what they're doing with Cyberpunk, and this is just a preview of things to come for NVIDIA. Ray tracing, path tracing is the, way, is the way forward. So that, of course, is going to be something that's going to be heavily focused on, not just with the design of Blackwell, but, of course, also the marketing and so on and so on. So giving us a 
quick overview of Blackwell. Um, TSMC's 3NM process, massive overhaul to the architecture. SM units see a new structure, advanced uh, denoising. Again, p uh, path and ray tracing performance go up the wazoo. Monolithic design for GeForce, MCM for HPC. Again, this could change depending on our DNA 4, but so far, uh, NVIDIA feel that they can probably take it on with a monolithic design. GDDR7, PCIe Gen 5, clock frequency target is over 3 GHz, not, however, for GB100. Performance versus the previous generation is 2 to 2.6 times. A small note about those performance claims, those targets are for both Lovelace and Hopper. So my assumption is that GB100 is likely the higher end of this range and the gaming variants are likely the lower end. It's a bit too early though, actually get exact numbers because obviously these are not designs which have been, you know, taped out and final silicon, but Clearly, the question also is what metrics are being used to evaluate this performance. For example, is it TFLOPs? Is it raw FPS? Is it ray tracing performance? And so on. I've also been given some early specification targets for both GB100 and 102. These could definitely be subject to change. And so far, I've only been able to uh, confirm them with a single source. Now, this source has been pretty good in the past, and that's putting it mildly, but of course, any information can be wrong, so obviously take it with a pinch of salt. But GB100 is 256 SM, 5120-bit HBM3, with 128 megabytes of L2 cache. GB102, these of course are going to be for the GeForce cards, 144 SM, 384-bit GDDR7, 96 megabytes of L2, PC CIE Gen 5 times 16. Now, if you've got keen eyes and ears, you may have noticed that 144 SMs is not exactly that much difference to the Lovelace parts available now. Of course, we're talking about the full dies here, so obviously they could get segmented. However, I was told though that the vast majority of performance for Blackwell over its predecessors is due to significant overhauls to the architecture. Now, of course, I don't know the number of cores per SM and how it's changed quite yet. Multiple sources, including this one who gave me a lot of correct Lovelace info was adamant that the SM structure has also seen significant overhauls though versus its predecessor. Now at first honestly I was a little skeptical of 144 SMs and of course this information could be untrue but assuming it is right and we do see a new design as well doing direct comparisons against one architecture to another is very difficult. For example the RX 580 based on, of course, Polaris from AMD, typically is around 30, 35% slower than an RDNA 1 based RX 5600 XT. Keeping with AMD again as an example, Vega 64 and its 4096 shaders is about half the speed of the RX 6800's 3840 shaders. Now, of course, with these examples, such as Vega 64 to the RX 6800, there's also a huge uh, discrepancy in the frequency. But my point is that specifications without additional context isn't necessarily insight into its capabilities. I'd also add that logically speaking, the RTX 4090 is a little over 20% faster than the RX 7900 XTX on average. Of course, if the RTX 4090 Ti ever actually bloody launches, we can probably say that this advantage is going to be pushed to 30, maybe 40%, depending on the final configuration and of course the game. So assuming even that the performance targets I've been told for Blackwell are vastly inflated and Nvidia only manages, let's say 50 to 70% of a performance increase, RDNA 4, logically anyway, would roughly need to double its performance to essentially be equal to Nvidia's part. With that said, I am hearing lots of positive information regarding RDNA 4. The engineering is very ambitious, with multiple GCXs forming a GCD, as I've said. But the question is whether AMD will be able to pull this off. Again, it's a very ambitious project. Early targets I was told for RDNA 4 are over two times increase over RDNA 3. I do think, though, that they are referring to FP32 performance based on what I was told by sources. 
this honestly doesn't come as much of a surprise. It's pretty much historic that AMD have done this from RDNA 1 to RDNA 2, RDNA 2 to RDNA 3. They've essentially doubled the TFLOP performance. Again, whether they're able to actually achieve this in terms of frame rate is an entirely different story, but obviously it's going to be very interesting to see what AMD does in terms of its design. So then guys, the next generation of graphics performance is going to be very interesting. I've been hearing excellent things for Intel going forward with Battle Mage, obviously around RTX 4080 performance, sure, but their plans allegedly are to accelerate the launch of Celestial. I've heard it's around two times faster than RTX 4080, which in theory anyway should mean that it's going to compete quite well with both Blackwell and RDNA 4. This is obviously going to be excellent for us as PC gamers. I also, in a future video, want to discuss N32 and N33 as I finally started to get some solid information concerning the release dates of these products and some updates onto the performance targets as well. I was going to release it in this video, however, I just wanted to double check a couple of things before I put out the information. So I'm pretty certain of it so far, but I just want to double check it with at least one other source. But it's going to be very interesting, honestly, what happens in the mid-range of this current generation of products. Going forward, though, with Blackwell, so far I haven't been given things like the full VRAM configuration. Obviously, I've mentioned the bus whip of um, GB, um, uh, GB102, excuse me. But it's going to be very interesting to see what NVIDIA does with the various configurations of SKUs going down the stack and how much VRAM we get. Obviously, with the 4070, for example, we've got a, well honestly kind of measly eight gigabytes of ram you can argue that for now it's probably okay for like 1080p 1440p but going forward even now i would say that it's just not enough it's going to be very interesting to see what nvidia feels like it can get away with the with the next generation of products and also i'm going to be very curious to see what amd does going forward for the marketing of rdna3 ultimately pricing is going to really kind of differentiate all of these different products one of the big problems, of course, at the moment is that even if we were to look at, hypothetically, the performance of the RTX 4070 being what I've been hearing anyway around the 3080 level, yeah, I mean, it's not exactly a massive leap over its predecessors. Hopefully, Blackwell will be better. Again, given the fact that it's a massive architectural innovation, allegedly, over its predecessors, this makes sense because, honestly, NVIDIA have basically been refining the same architecture for some time now. I'm going to be very interested also to see how AMD go forward with RDNA 4. To repeat myself from earlier, what I've been hearing so far is kind of promising, but ultimately, it's whether they can actually pull this off. It's going to be very interesting though to see what the next generation of graphics and APIs bring to the table. With that said, hopefully you have enjoyed this video. If you did, well, you can check out the sponsor down below, and of course, you can subscribe to the channel if you're not already done so. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.